Hi friends, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. So today I am sharing with you this cute little st uh, card I made a while ago using the Seaside Seagull sep stamp set from MFT Stamps. Um, I did this one for their sketch challenge a few months ago, like a while ago. And I didn't get around to editing the video, so I figured I don't have time to film one right now and this would be the perfect thing for you. So I am stamping out our little seagulls and some clouds using MFT Extreme Black Ink. And then I'm just going to jump into some simple Copic coloring. Starting off with the warm grays. I work from darkest to lightest, blending every color out um, with the next color to make sure I have a smooth transition in between them. This one was filmed a long time ago because this one was filmed in the basement because I can tell by the backdrop. <laughs> so this was before I moved craft rooms and I've been upstairs for a little while now. So... <laughs> get through that backlog, Jesse. People seem to enjoy craft videos, so I'm going to keep making them because I like doing it. Anyway, blending those all out and slowly fading into the lightest color. I do believe I go in with a double or with the um, colorless blender so that they still appear white because seagulls are white. Um, I kept them a warm gray to contrast against the colors we're going to use in this sky afterwards using ink blending. This one's going to be difficult to voice over. I don't remember the card itself. If that makes sense, it was filmed so long ago. I usually don't wait this long before I get them edited, but I did. So I went, I stayed in the warm gray family and went to a darker color in order to do all of our little birdies wings. I think they're so cute. This stem set is so much fun. I just enjoy it. I think they're cheeky and they're adorable and I love the way they're drawn so stylized as opposed to more realistic. They make me happy. MFT is one of my favorite companies, so that's not surprising that I love it. Um, I do use a lot of their stamp sets, blending that out with our lightest color. And then I think I do... Oh, I wasn't sure if I was going to make that into a bucket or if I was going to leave it as a log of wood, and I decided to go with a log of wood. So I started off just coloring it in with a flat base of a light color. And now I'm going through... I know it's hard to see because of the way I'm holding my pen and the filming setup I had downstairs. But I'm just making like random lines and blending them out and little curly cues and things in order to make it look like it's got wood grain texture so it kind of feels more like bark and it looks like a stump. Then we'll do our little clouds here. This one is using some yellow in it and I think I'm just putting, yes, I'm just using a dotting technique. So I'm just using the tip of the brush pen and just touching it very, very lightly to the paper. This is sped up a whole bunch. I'm not going anywhere near this fast. And I just kind of picked some colors that were going to be similar to what I was going to use for the clouds in the background. So I have that yellow. Now I'm doing like a red, well, it's a red color, but it's kind of like a peachy tone. And I'm going to guess a blue is going to come. Nope, purple. Purple's next. See, it's been a while. I hope everybody's doing well, by the way. So some purple. Oh, there's the blue, a little bit of blue, and it's very, very soft and pale. It's actually hard to see in the video. You can see it in the clouds in real life, but in the video, it's a little bit more difficult to see. So then we're going to cut all of our images out. But before that, Jessie remembered she didn't color in the beaks. See, I don't edit out all the stuff that I forget because I, don't know, I think it's funny that I get that far ahead of myself. So I'm going in with some orange colors just to give them a nice bright beak because I didn't want to leave that white. Um, as you can see, of course, all the colors are to the side of the cardstock there. Fussy cut all of those out. And now I'm going to mask off my card. And here I'm just mapping out where I want the blocks to be. So what I'm going to do is take some thin green painter's tape and I'm just creating some blocks. Oh, look, there's my hair. We don't see a lot of that anymore because of the way I film now. <laughs> but downstairs, you got to stop viewing my head all the time. <laughs> just map So that's just mapping out where I want the quadrants to be because I didn't want it to be like a window frame. I wanted it kind of kitty wampus from side to side. So I just mapped those out so that I could make sure they were a nice straight line. Cut off that little tail. Make sure everything was pressed down really good. So I have tumbled glass. Oh boy, that went really fast. Well, we're, we're starting off with tumbled glass. And I'm going to put just a light wash of color over top of all of those blocks just to give it a little bit of color to start with. And I slowly start going darker and darker in that. This is super sped up. 
but I just work in light circles and I'm not touching the paper a whole lot. And I'm just kind of letting the foam do its work in order to get that color put down onto my cardstock. Instead of rushing it and pushing really hard and ending up with like circles and odd shapes and harsh edges and things on the cardstock, I just take my time and work lightly and slowly using my Copic, or I mean using my foam blender. Once we get all the blue on, I go in with more blue. Apparently I didn't like the way it looked. <laughs> Looks like I decided to make it a little bit more solid. So once that's done, now I have a pink. Oh boy, guys, I don't know what colors these are. I am going to guess one is scattered straw, one is abandoned coral, and one is the lavender. Would be my guess, just based upon the other colors I was using. And I'm just using the mini um, cloud or the small cloud stencil here from MFT and slowly blending um, the colors and creating some layered clouds in all of these little boxes. I'm twisting it and turning it and using different corners in different places and rotating through the colors really in no particular order, just whatever I think would look good, trying not to keep the colors too close to each other, letting them stretch across the different quadrants in some places, cutting them off in others, kind of just having, having a fun time creating a little bit of a background here. So that was purple and add some pink and I didn't go all the way across. It's fun. Just play. Because once you pull that mask off, you're not going to notice um, what you did. And I think it looks really good actually all as one piece. Like if those green lines weren't there, that could definitely pass as like a really pretty stormy sky. So now I'm just taking some more of the blue and I'm blending that just around the outside edges to make it all meld together. And then we will splatter some water on top of it to create some more texture, especially because I use the Distress Oxides. I do like the way they oxidize and that chalky kind of a color it leaves behind. And then I just very slowly pulled these up. So what I did was I made sure that my cardstock um, underneath was nice and dry before I started pulling these up so that I didn't rip the paper. And then I just took my time pulling off all of our masks. And you can see how pretty and how sharp those edges are on um, our finished card panel here on the front. So now that that's all put together, there was a little bit of an error there where it bled underneath and um, the tape ripped up the paper. So I just took my, my Tombow Sand Eraser just to smooth that out. And now I have a Conti pencil. I don't know if I stick with this one. Nope. I'm trying to add some white highlights and I wasn't sure what pencil I wanted. And I seem to be flipping back and forth between this Conti one, which is kind of like a chalk pass or like a pastel pencil and my luminance, and I'm just adding a little bit of highlight to some of the clouds. It's very, very faint and hard to see. I always enjoy kind of going extra on my cards in case you've never noticed. You don't have to do this. Th this was really like definitely not something that was needed, but I liked the way it looked, so I just committed and finished it. Now we're just going to put a bunch of foam tape on the back of our um, little seagulls after we tape this down to our top folding card base, which is a two size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And so I'm just kind of mapping out where I want all of my little images to go to start. And then I will slowly start adhering them. So I'm going to pick, put a foam tape on the back of them and just kind of go back in and put them roughly where they were before. I have a fairly good idea. I think that first cloud I glued flat, everything else is on, um, foam squares, but it all kind of comes back together relatively fast. And I think it's super cute guys. Um, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. We're just going to add the sentiment because I missed that, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe. Um, I do enjoy sharing and I hope you guys like coming around. I think it would be fun. If you give me a thumbs up, it helps out my channel a whole ton more than you know. If you're looking for any of the products I used in the card today, they will all be linked in the description box below with my Instagram and my YouTube or my blog and all of that fun stuff. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.